Welcome to the College of Wealth Podcast, the ultimate financial guide to help you understand your financial stresses and how you can build from it. Your lessons won't be in class, and your projects can either save you or earn you money. We host episodes two times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays to help you reach your financial freedom. Now let's get started with your hosts, Owen Parody and William Goulet. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Owen Parody. I'm here with my co-host, William Goulet, and we're proud to present to you the College Wealth Podcast. Podcast, podcast, podcast. Yes, yes, yes. I agree with you, Will, on that one, because this is a financial podcast that teaches you the latest and greatest information about money, because at the end of the day, this is a crazy money-making world. Yes, yes, yes. Crazy money-making. I agree with you, <laughs> Owen. You're dead on with that. <laughs> So much repetition. I love it. <clears throat> but without uh, this podcast, would you like to go in, because it's uh, information, we do like to go and say that it's for entertainment purposes only. Yes. We do like so to inform. I have some thoughts on that, yeah. actually. Okay. Uh, entertainment purposes, I concur. Yes, 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 I agree. Uh, <laughs> but I'm thinking um, it sort of reduces the value of the it doesn't reduce yeah it does reduce the value of the of the information so okay. let's include that as part of our pitch i'm thinking something like <laughs> information <laughs> entertainment put them together you know and uh not body electricity but when you put them <laughs> together it does bring infotainment what do you think i do agree okay very that, much so i, I like that it. the body of electricity is a throwback <laughs> Yeah, good old uh, retro Canadian commercial. <laughs> yeah. But we do like to go and call this infotainment here at the College of Wealth podcast because Will nor myself were not financial advisors here by any means. Certainly here. not me anyways, Owen. N- not me either. No, uh, not, not at all. True, true. <laughs> but at least we studied business. We were uh we work in a bis- uh we both have a business degree, like a bachelor's degree. Yeah. Will has a uh, works in marketing. I work in finance. So yeah, true. we're just kind of to show that we have, we're passionate about this kind of stuff. We're uh, over 120 episodes in here. So I think, you, you know what that means? It means that our interest is, uh, as we like to say, valid and not <laughs> in just any way valid in the Gen Z kind of way. I mean, you can imagine <laughs> a check mark emoji next to it, you know, that kind yep. of valid for sure. And not only do we like to go and call this uh, this information valid, we do like to go and do this podcast for two other reasons. And I like Will to go and tell us those two reasons. Thank you, Owen. I'd love to jump in. Uh, <laughs> we love making this podcast for the purpose of making money. You know, because one of the easy ways of making money, uh, one of the easy ways of increasing your net worth is by making money. Uh, yeah. There's only so much money that you can save, but you can make sure. a limited amount. Definitely. Now, you might have caught on to something. The other way that we can do it is sometimes we love to save money. That's and true. And sometimes that's how we have to go about it. It's definitely true. And uh, today's episode is actually about making money, though. So you, it, 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 uh, Oftentimes it is, but fair enough. But fair it's, enough. It's, a, it's, a mix of, it's a mix of both. You, I'll, I'll say that uh, I'll explain to it in a few seconds here. Will sure. doesn't know about the, the content of today's episode, but to my I listeners. Never do. I never do. Uh, <laughs> but for today's episode, without uh, getting too much into it here, or without discussing episode 123, we mm-hmm. need to go and talk about, if you haven't done so, make sure to give a five-star review on Apple or on Spotify. It would really uh, be appreciated. We do like to listen, to, or li- not listen, but we do like to see your comments, and also it helps us with the algorithm. Also, if you haven't done so, check us out on YouTube. We do have some more content on you. We have our content, our visuals. Both Will and I are very animated people. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a lot of fun. So go check that out. Give uh, give us a like on there. Subscribe. And, of course, check us out on Instagram at College of Wealth Podcast. Or also TikTok as well. We, we, we're right. on a, many platforms here. So go check Exciting us out. Stuff, we're on a lot of different stuff here. So without further ado, we got to go and jump into episode 123. And before and... we jump into episode 123, oh. I want to, second time, bring up the quote of the week. The, the, of the day. bring them up early. 
I know, I know, but trust me. No, it's, no, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, it okay. goes well with our introduction to the podcast. Okay. Uh, okay. You'll remember that the quote of the week is Martin Luther King, as selected per you, yep. by you. <laughs> uh, per you. Yeah, per you. Uh, and per <laughs> you, I'd love to jump into it. Uh, so Martin Luther King says, we must learn to live together as brothers or we will perish together as fools. And that's the goal wow. of getting together. Uh, and and getting together for a podcast, uh, listening into the podcast, viewing sure. a podcast, yeah. is so that we can learn from each other all together. And that's why we encourage in- interaction. Yep. We get smarter because of it. The viewers mm-hmm. get smarter because of it. And at the end of the day, let's try not to die as fools. <laughs> well, we're trying to avoid that kind of stuff on the podcast here. That's we're right. Try- we like to make everyone's gears turn. That's our biggest goal here. So if yeah. you come out of this here, you came out with information and you're able to uh, discuss with others. So much stats that I get and so much information that I am able to provide or uh, consume because of this podcast, I'm able to go and have good conversations with people because I, I, of it. So much of our conversations or stats or facts or even just points of discussion that we come up together – uh, I, I go out and I use it in the world. I'm like, Oh, I don't know yes. if you caught this and this here's yep. going on and that, you know? Yep. So, yeah. It, it's wild. So, so our first episode, double pat oh. on the back for us, <laughs> <laughs> but our first episode is going to be actually something that we never covered. And I'm actually pretty excited about this. And, uh, last, uh, our last episode was on the worst things you can do with money. Yes. Or extra cash. Well, this one is the worst ways to be making money. Oh, okay. There, there's different ways you can be, make money in the, in the world. Yeah. And we're going to be talking of the worst ways to make money legally. Okay, okay. That's it. You're right. <laughs> that's <a> good. <laughs> legally here. That's what we're going to be talking about. We're not going to be uh, talking about drugs or distribution of any kind. Because those might be up there in the worst ways, I guess. <laughs> good money, now, but it's, it's not good for you. Yeah. And do we mean worse in the sense, uh, like, waste of time? Like, you could be using your yes. time better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, the way we, we have four different things. I actually had to scratch one out because I was just so much on edge with it. And I didn't like it because it is a valid way. Okay. And I, re- I had an aha moment where I'm there and I'm like... Yes, exactly. Aha, uh-huh. <laughs> the pop or the soda. But I was there and I'm like, as if I don't have this in here. And this is probably the biggest one. And I left it for last. Best but we have, to, we have to start off with our stats, obviously. Stat man, of course. Of, of course. course, of course. And our first stat that we're going to be discussing about uh, how many people fall victim to scams or fraud every year? One in how many? Oh, um, one in every eight. One in every ten. Oh, okay. So, so you, better you're, you're, better than I thought. Better better than what you thought. Not good, was, but still better. I was like two and a half percent off, so I'm pretty <laughs> happy about that. All right, our next stat here. What percentage uh so obviously the youngest generation fall the least susceptible to scams? Mm-hmm. And we're gonna be talking about people in their twenties. Okay. How, um, there was a significant increase in scams over the last few years, especially, but notably in 19, uh, 19, 2019, 2020. They didn't talk about 2020, 2021, but I'm sure it skyrocketed even more. Yeah. But so much more. What was online. that? Per- what percentage increase did people in their 20s fall victim of scams? In 2019, 2020? Correct, yes. Uh, an increase of, I don't know, 21%. 59 percent whoa holy crap yeah okay. 59 there was a 59 percent increase in scans for people in their 20s from 2019 to 2020 yeah yeah wow and that's crazy it, the average scam was approximately 2700 dollars. that's a lot of money this is according to cnbc make it yeah and uh, if you take that one out of ten people lose 2700 dollars. that's a lot that is a lot. It is a lot of money. So a lot, uh, a lot of younger generation believe, oh, it's only the seniors who fall for that kind of stuff. How could you not fall for that? Well, there's a lot of a lot of scams out there, and they're tailoring to exactly you. So don't fall victim to it. 
Yeah. And True. we're not we're not going to be talking about scams particular here. Like th- these are legal ways to be making money. Mm-hmm. Okay. So our third stat is actually a question in regards to credit card debt. Not good money handling. Yeah. And what what is the credit card debt in the United States according to USA Today? Uh, per capita or sum total? Sum total. Uh, okay. Credit card uh, debt, not loans. Yes, yes. Well, I know that the average is 6000 I read this one or two years ago. Yes. So let's multiply that by $200 million, 1.2, I don't know if I, $12, $12 billion. $12 billion? That seems very low as soon as I $12 said billion dollars for 300 million people who live in the United States, 350 million people. $1.2 bi- trillion. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot closer. It's actually eight eight hundred and fifty six, 856, basically $857 billion. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so a little bit off, but hey, you know what? Well, I, I was disappointed when you said $4 billion. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know what twelve got twelve billion dollars. I was like, that's literally four dollars a person. Yeah, I really underestimated. I, I, I didn't take the times one thousand <laughs> right at all. <laughs> and uh, but yes, eight hundred fifty-seven billion dollars in credit card debt in the U.S. alone. That's a lot, and that's at a twenty percent rate. Yeah, Give yeah, take, on average, you know? on average. Yeah. And last but not least, we're going to be talking about uh, the amount of adults who don't have any financial guidance or anyone they can trust for financial help. Would you like to guess the percentage of adults in the United we, States who don't have any guidance? We had something similar recently, and it was a shockingly high number. Uh, 55%, so the majority. Who have no financial guidance or no one to trust financially. Oh, no, that, so- that sounds wrong. 30%. 30% have no That's a good money. guess. It's 25%. Wow. 25 and uh, because we were talking about our previous stat about 60% of people don't have professional help. Right, But this right. is people who have absolutely no help at all whatsoever. They don't have any guidance. Oh. They're, they're flying off the seat of their pants and they're maybe doing their own research of some kind. Yeah. Hopefully. Well, it, doing a little bit of your own research is so much better than no research at all. So for sure, that's only if they're doing it though. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it, like it, when we talked about being scared of looking at your bank account and all that, you can imagine yep. people are scared to, you know, it, while paralyzed by fear and not looking up how to get out of it. I can see mm-hmm. that easily. Now that we, but you're totally right about that. And a lot of these people, and that's exactly why I put this stat last is misinformation and they're also more susceptible to scams or quick ways to make money or just having the financial freedom with very little effort or knowledge. True. And And people always want a quick way out of what, whatever troubles they're into. Right. And the first way, our first segments that a lot of people try and uh, try out Mm -hmm. is online surveys. Oh yes. Yes. I, I remember I signed up for uh, a few I, online services. I'm like, hey, let's let's try I, this out. I did it as well uh, when I was a teenager and I couldn't work really. Yeah. But then they never wanted someone like me because I didn't have any job experience or I didn't have any. I was never their target market. You weren't a consumer, and they want consumer surveys, right? Well, that's it. I'm also going to say online surveys, but I'm going to wrap in things like Amazon Turk or TaskRabbit, things like that have very, very menial work for okay. like it, like Amazon Turk pays pennies for the tasks that you do. Oh yeah, you go click on things and- Yeah, yeah, yeah. very, very menial. Uh, Nerd Wallet, so we, we've had many stats from Nerd Wallet prior. I actually had hired, uh, well not hired, but made three of their employees work a total of three hour, uh, 50 hours each, solely answering surveys. Okay. They made a total of ninety dollars between all three of them. For the fifty hours per person. Yes. <laughs> so ninety dollars total between wow. all three of them. So they made thirty-three dollars each. So ninety dollars for a hundred and fifty hours total. Yep. That is ridiculous. 
and it ranges uh these websites range anywhere between 41 cents and two dollars an hour on average for the work that you put in for answering surveys hey you know don't be answering surveys and be asking for minimum wage to go up well, uh, yeah you're better off with a minimum wage job yeah and the i mean it is work to do but it's very very little effort and it's so long to do like I remember doing them when I was a teenager and it's like, here's a survey for 15 cents. It's going to take you 20 minutes. They're boring. That's they're it's, really it's, boring. Yeah. <laughs> they're so boring. It's like, they're not testing you at all. It's just like, Hey, what do you do for a living? How old are you? What is your gender? What is, uh, wh what end of the world do you live in? And honestly, all of it like, is just very mundane work. Yeah. And a, the reward and the payout is so high to get to. Like sometimes it's like some of them even say the reward is as low as $10. Well, guess what? $10 is going to take you freaking two months to do. Yeah, true. And it, that's that's immediately what we think is, oh, look at that survey. It's just a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there. But there's a threshold that you need to do to actually get that payout. <laughs> so, yeah, keep yeah. that in mind. It's so much work for so little, uh, for so little return. True. And the other thing to add to this is that companies, when you're answering these surveys, are getting this information uh, about you, and they basically use it for marketing purposes. Mm. Okay. So then you get bombarded with ads. You end up getting, uh, and on top of that, not only are you getting, are going to get bombarded with. Uh, that inform uh, with ads, you're going to get emails, you're going to get calls, you're going to get everything in general afterwards because they got your information. They profiled you perfectly because you answered everything that anyone could possibly want about yourself. And they paid freaking, uh, well, and you got 15 cents. The company itself who you're working for might have pay uh, gotten $2 per, per client, uh, per customer or per person who answered. Yeah, yeah. Their margins, their margins might be nice, but yours not so much. No, exactly. So now they don't have to deal with any of that stuff. But now your emails are getting bombarded with spam. You're getting a phone calls for telemarketers. You're getting text messages from what whatever person, and yeah. all for the fifteen cents that you had. And it keeps adding up. And it's just the time that you put in is not worth it one bit. And God forbid you have a pay-as-you-go cell phone plan. <laughs> in one text, you might be losing that 15 cents you made. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, it's true. And that that is our first segment as to biggest waste of money. Online surveys. I'm I, on board. I did, I did something different. I don't do it so much anymore, but it actually helped with my speaking and being self-aware of what's going on. But I did something and I brought it up before, user testing. Yes, yes. And user testing, it was awesome for me. They were paying 5 to $10 a test I was doing. And it lasted anywhere between 15 and 20 minutes. Yeah, that's that's reasonable. But I had to go to websites and then they were recording my screen. And they were recording what I was listening. Like, they were recording me speaking. And basically, I had to speak what I was thinking what am I doing? This is what I'm, uh, it's like, okay, well, they, uh, they have a task for me to do. And it's like, I'm trying to find this. It's not necessarily easy to find. Mm -hmm. I'm having difficulties. Oh, I found it and stuff like that. And then after they gave me $10 and I actually made a, a couple hundred bucks doing this. Nice. Yeah. So if someone does have spare time, that can be vi a viable substitute. <laughs> to well, that's thing. it. But it's also extremely competitive. So the website, uh, they'll have specific people that they're looking for. It's like, okay, well, I'm looking for, we're looking for people who speak French or we're looking for people who, who have a gambling account or we're looking for people who are in university or different things like that. But that is a, definitely a big substitute you can do. It's not consistent, but at least it's something that comes in. And I'd like to add that it also helps you it, it, by making you go behind the scenes and explaining your thought process. It mm -hmm. actually it helps you create a little bit of knowledge of what it should be like to navigate through a website. Yes. And you, you, you low-key get a little bit of expertise in what yes. you're navigating. So, you know, it, I, I think that's a much better substitute personally. 
For sure. I think it's awesome. And on top of that, they give you feedback on the recording that you gave, depending on the place. Uh, Not every time, but I've had a few. They give you a rating on the work that you did, and some of them will leave comments and feedback saying, we really liked what you did, and it helps them. It helps you with the algorithm and them feeding you survey or not surveys, but tests that you have to do. Really, really cool. That's wicked. Yeah. So our second segment, we all know this one, 2AT. And it's all about drop shipping. Everyone <laughs> recommends the drop shipping. Every guru oh. online is, hey, look at this, and you can make margins and this and that. The key to drop shipping is to advertise on how to drop ship and how you can make money drop shipping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you get to a point where you start coaching coaches on how to drop ship. <laughs> I've coaching seen that. Coaches. I've seen that. That is yes. pretty intense. Yes. How to become a coach to train people for drop shipping. You know you know what's next, eh? It's it's lots of coach and lots of people. A little bit less coaches doing the same people. Maybe uh, uh, and then one person that coaches it all, all together, and <laughs> yeah. it almost creates like a, a pyramid sort of shape, oh. you know, of the organization. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> well, th- this this year, drop shipping you can make money. I'm not gonna lie, but it's not as easy as you think, and it's not like what the gurus say, and it's not easy work at all. The they- only thing that's easy. Is the process of sending the money, uh, sending the item to the to the person itself. Yeah. Everything else has a sift system and is not easy to follow. And they always show you sales. They'll always show oh, you sales, yeah. but uh, rarely do they ever show you direct profit. No, exactly. They're not going to go and tell you the profit at all. Yeah. And I find the biggest issue with drop shipping is the advertising. Yes. It costs so much money and you're not going to get advertising. uh, You're not going to get that brand recognition overnight. It takes months, even years of brand recognition. And Mm -hmm. how? no offense to these drop uh, shipping facilities, but they're all crap. Half of the product, like almost all the products that you get, their knockoffs are really bad. They're they're from Chinese manufacturers. Yeah. And it's it's extremely difficult to purchase them. So not only are you purchase, uh, so how are you spil- supposed to build a loyal brand on knockoff products or on products that are really really cheaply made? And as soon as you make your purchase order, are you doing uh, quality control on it? Are you verifying that it is a good product? No, you already purchased all this uh, all this quantity, so you know what happens. You're just selling whatever you got and, you know. So many, so many people don't even bother to purchase the product themselves beforehand. Yeah, yeah. It's just, and let's just I'm not, start marketing I, it. Don't get me wrong. I've seen some stuff on these websites that are actually pretty cool and they come out pretty awesome to begin sure. with. But the quality is not like what you see, let's say, at... Uh, your sporting goods store or if you like name brand or anything like that, it's very cheaply made yeah. and it's difficult uh, to sell. And everyone who tries to get in uses videos that the supplier has. Yeah, yeah. It would, it, uh, it's... You'll even see Mandarin writing, writing sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And uh, how are you supposed to sell something like that in terms of quality? If you want to go and do that, you got to make a high quality video. You got to go and advertise it. You got to go and have the voice for it. You got to go and have the people uh, displaying it. And that costs money. So even before you advertise it, this product from China that uh, you're supposed to be at least checking the quality for, you have to have the quality production. Yeah. And then yeah. you have to have the brand for it. You got to go and pay for your marketing. Like you're going to pay for the brand. You got to pay for the logo. You're going to pay for your, uh, your store. And yeah. then not only that, you're not, unless you're planning on having one item, you're going to have multiple items. True. Yeah. 
<laughs> True. It, it, you don't see people just selling the one thing. Yeah. No. Nope. Go for multiple, so you market multiple. Yeah. Pay for ads for multiple versions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, it adds up. It yeah. adds up quite a bit, and if you want a good business, it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of effort, and it's not. It's not cheap to do. It's just not. It's not as simple as what the gurus say. You're starting a business, and there's nothing keeping your customers to you. No, you know, uh, it, no loyalty. You have to buy, get a new customer every single time. You know, yep. It's uh, yeah, yeah. I don't like it personally. No. I've thought about it multiple times though. I, oh, yeah. I, I won't lie. I've said, "Oh, this looks nice. This looks nice." I remember you sharing a story on the podcast of you trying this. I I could share it again, a bit of humor yeah, yeah. for it's everyone. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. So a bit of humor for everyone. I did it uh, I think it was in university, like my first year university or something like that. Yeah. I think it was second or third. Second. It was I knew it was early, but uh anyways, I did this store. I was really happy and I actually worked a lot on the branding and everything and it worked out really nicely. But what ended up happening was I decided to have, there's a way of making money where it's, you pay for the shipping. It's free, but it's you pay for the shipping. That's where you make your money. That was a common tactic back then. Back then. Yeah. yeah. Well, dummy here forgot about the free shipping code that he has on the top of his website oh. and someone decided to purchase like a dozen of the items. So I was out like over a hundred dollars and I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to give them the items. Yeah. But I was, I was like, I'm an idiot. It, and uh. it, could you have canceled the order? I guess you could uh, have. I could have, I could have, but I, I would, I I paid the price for my own doing here. And you and I bet you were thinking, oh well, you know, maybe I get this, and then maybe it'll be repeat business, or maybe they'll recommend me. <laughs> Dude, you don't realize how awesome it was when I had my phone, and then I had the Shopify app, and then I hear the notification cha ching, cha ching, uh, saying that I got a sale, and I was freaking out. Someone decided to buy something. Well, they were basically taking. Oh, they weren't taking. They were freaking taking an opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> I was giving it to them for free. It. Yeah, but it, I never ever got a sale. I never got a sale other than with friends or whatever, and it was a big waste of money <laughs> and time. But I did learn. I did learn. What What did you think of of the the product? You know what? The products that I had were awesome. I thought they were them? pretty cool. They, uh, they, it was a variety of different styles. Like it was all like wooden apparel. Yeah. Like I, I remember wooden... looking at them like these do look nice. I just, I just never wear anything. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I don't blame you. Uh, but it was pretty cool apparel that I had and I liked it a lot and I purchased it and I tried to advertise it and it just really didn't work out. And that's the last point to this, to the segment. And that's the fact that, uh, this, it's so fierce. This competition is insanely fierce, insanely. Yeah. And you're, co you're competing with businesses now, like yeah, full blown yeah. established businesses to get advertising spots. And you're going to put in freaking these crappy ads to uh, go yeah. in. You got to offer something very unique if you're going to compete, you know, yes. there, there's different ways. And this also might make a, a good episode, but uh, ways that you can differentiate yourself in the market. Uh, you yeah. know, it, it, two quick ones is either quality or pricing. Yeah. And, and there's more, but you know, if you're not, if you don't have one of those, a, a way to you're... differentiate yourself, <laughs> wh why are you unique? Why would anyone buy from you? Oh yeah, exactly. And I think the, the other one we're looking at is time, time, quality, and price. Are you saving time? Is there good quality or is there good price? And branding. That's the, yep. Yeah. So, it, 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 but if you're just starting out, it, there were just so many, like they were trying to tell you on how to cut corners on everything. And then by the end, you're just basically with a skeleton of a store. 
it, it's a low cost and uh, barrier to entry. The barrier to yes. entry is not high cost wise, but the barrier to success is it's a lot higher. Than, higher. Yeah. Yeah. Than perceived. And the people who are hosting these drop shipping web uh, seminars or they're the ones who are making good money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the first seminar is free. The first seminar is free. <laughs> yeah. And now that we have that second co uh, segment covered, we talk about our third one, and that is day trading. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the nerves, the nerves when it when people day trade, man. Oh, it is insane. I'm saying day trading, but I'm also talking about foreign exchange trading as well. Sure. Sure. I'm throwing that in there. I know some people who've actually made good money on day trading. Absolutely. I've, it, it can I, happen. It can. It definitely yeah. can. And I've actually, I've made money on some swing trades before. I don't know if it was you or something like that. I don't, I don't know if it was you or our other buddy. He was t looking at this penny stock. And I kid you not, this stock was worth like 3.5 cents. Okay. And I put in $250 and I sold that $750 that same day. Oh, yeah, that was not me. That was definitely uh, not me. <laughs> and but I could have went all the way up to $1100. And I was I was uh, but it went all that same evening. I was like, should I hold? And I was like, no, like this is ridiculous. Like I'm not freaking holding this stuff and I I sold it. So you made a good chunk of change. Oh, I made more than what I made on a, on a regular day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I don't swing trade. I, I was there and I remember seeing it and I was like, I'm not doing this again. Like I was paying attention nonstop to that ticker, refresh, 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 looking at the candle lights or the candlesticks. It's yeah, yeah. not, it's not worth it. It's really not worth it. It, it, I always associate with high stress and, you know, you always hear these people in finance who are doing extremely well and they're making lots of money. Yep. Uh, you know, one Our teacher was telling us of, of some of his friends uh, who, who went into finance and they're like, yep, yeah, I made a killing. But they, you know, the the amount of uh the age 20 years <laughs> yeah yeah they're they're supplementing with different kinds of performance enhancing <laughs> drugs and the, everything that they have to do just to keep up is crazy crazy they're so. they're the ones who are supporting the illegal <laughs> the illegal <laughs> ways to make money the illegally bad ways to make money the the other half of the episode we cut off <laughs> <laughs> But it's true uh, in that sense. And they say for as for day traders, 80% of day traders quit within the first two years. When I say day trading, I mean like working at full, trying to do it full time. Yeah. And then 40% of them actually quit within the first month. Big losses. I'm, my guess is, <laughs> is well, why. Here's another stat. And this one's just a general talk that people have about uh, – Day trading, and it says ninety percent of day traders lose ninety percent of their capital within 90, 90 days. No way. It's just general talk about the rule of ninety with what uh, with day trading. Yeah, I mean, I, I love it when when rules line up like that. Honestly, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm on board. Yeah, it's it's really really rough. And um, the other thing, if you are new to day trading, you're gonna get a nice little surprise. If you actually want to do day trading without getting flagged, mm -hmm. you need to have over $25,000 in your account. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's good to you, know. Yeah, because you are known or as seen as being able to be financially responsible enough to have $25,000 in your bank account. Mm, I see. Huh. It well, is, it, and it, it, aren't the tax implications pretty, uh, like oh, when it comes to tax season, that's when it gets it's a little messy. horrid, horrid, <laughs> because now you're trying, imagine doing 10 to 15 trades a day, and so you got gains, and then you got losses, so now you got to calculate your gains and your losses, and do you want, uh, could you imagine the amount of paperwork that's coming to your door for tax season, all true. the trades that you did? I literally... Like I remember last year, I may have done a total of 
exactly that 10 to 15 trades that entire year yeah like uh specifically selling stuff there sure and other than that uh i I had maybe four or five pages worth of stuff easily and for the people who do it all the time i could imagine stacks and stacks of paperwork i would not want to be your bookkeeper yeah yeah or or even if you're doing one of those free ones yourself (laughs) yeah 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 (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) and like you said before god forbid especially our generation wanting to tinker around with margins oh yeah yeah which which is indebting yourself to, to to make money on that yep and we have things like Wall Street bets where everyone is doing margin calls and making insane money. But it's for every person that makes money, there's a hundred of them that have lost money. Yeah, yeah. People never share their, their failures. Just like people often don't share when they get scammed out of money. Exactly. You know, people They're are ashamed, ashamed of, it. of losing money. Yeah. It's, it's an awesome way to say it. It's not awesome, though, no, but it's, it's a good way of saying it. <laughs> but... This also comes down to the reality, uh, similar to drop shipping, and it's time. Time, uh, you need to know your market. You need to be understanding how it works. You need to be doing insane amount of research. Yeah. You got to be doing a lot of commitments, and you got to stick to your guns. There is no such thing as greed. There is no such thing. You here are my uh, here are my goals. It's like I'm not going to take more than a ten percent loss. And I'm not going to take more of a 10% gain. Mm. So it's like after 10%, sell. And then if there's a 10%, sell. So you're not losing an insane amount of money. But at the same time, though the people who work, uh, who work, who do day trading have their niche. It's like, okay, well, I do specific, I do tech, specifically farm tech or of that kind, or I deal with resources or I deal with, they all have their specialty. Yeah, you you need to know what you need to have an expertise in something. Otherwise, it's just guessing. Yes, and on top of that, all the people who do day trading are glued to their screens twenty four seven. Yeah, that, that, because that, there's other markets open at the same time too. Afterwards, like the foreign markets. That, that's no way to live, uh, in my opinion. Like, yeah. No, some people do it. Hey, more power to you. But you know, uh, I'll leave that to friend, the experts. Uh, I think my dad or my uncle, my uncle's friend or something like that got into day trading and they said he made a killing. He was really, really good at it, but he lost his family. He lost his wife and everything. And he lost a lot because he was just glued to his screen 24 seven. It's really sad. Yeah. That's a big price to pay. Last but not least, though, we got to talk about our final segment. This is the one that I was going to, uh, I literally replaced from something else. Okay. Because yeah. I was there and I'm like, oh my gosh, as if we haven't spoken we about this. Yeah, yeah. And this one is multi level marketing schemes. Ah, yes, yes, of course. Do not, like, I, 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 I brought up points, like, as writing this, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so good. An awesome mm-hmm. way to look at it. So, the first thing I got to talk about a stat here. They say 90 to 99% of distributors in MLMs only receive $200 or less in commission a year. Whoa. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Absolutely abysmal. Like that is yeah. horrid. And the, the most, the most obvious thing, I don't know if I should talk about it. Or not. I, I, I will say first things first, the goal of, of MLMs aren't to make you wealthy. It's to make them wealthier. Yeah. yeah They're already wealthy it, from you. And it, inevitably you have to ask yourself, you say, okay, I have a coach. I have a mentor above me. Are they making a lot more money than me? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, what's going on there exactly? You know? Yes, it's true. So. And the way I broke this down, correct me if I'm wrong here. But I, I said it uh, in, my, uh, in my writing that you are an unpaid commission-based employee with yeah. sales goals plus you have to buy the products that you're uh, – yeah, you got to purchase the products that you're going to sell. You're not just reselling Kool-Aid. You have to drink the Kool-Aid too. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. But that, like I was there and I'm like, it's so true. You're doing unpaid commission for a company. Well, yeah. Like, sorry, yeah. unpaid commission. You're pay- you're an unpaid employee with commission. Yeah. And you're not a boss. You are an employee. Because and they have sales goals on top of that. You should be uh depending on how bad the MLM is, you have to meet ex- uh, expectations. You need to go and sell. You're not doing good enough if you're not selling enough and you need to be uh and the pressure you need to the, be they purchasing. do maintain you right, right. And it they do maintain pressure, but I don't know that they ever kick you out. They might just lower your rate of commission. Yes. Yes. Uh, which is it all depends on the MLM, but yeah, they they slowly nudge you out type of thing. It's brutal. It is absolutely horrendous, and for MLMs, it's pretty obvious that the competition is absolutely fierce. Yeah, everyone True. wants to do it. All you have to do is buy their entry package of one hundred and fifty or two hundred dollars, something that's enough but not too too much, and. You got your gateway in, but how does that make sense that they literally go and they literally go and give you the products? They give you maybe a small seminar on how to sell stuff, but they, that's mm-hmm. all they do. That's literally eh, all they do. True. But then they tell you how to do a proper party of some sort, like uh, a party for candle lights, which I'm like, or uh, Avon Tupperware products, party. Tupperware back in the day, Tupperware, but. Like it, it sucks. <laughs> I don't know many yeah. people who get excited about that kind of stuff nowadays. And yeah. especially with the information nowadays, you hear that kind of stuff. You're like, oh, fine, I'll go and help them out. And I, I find a lot of times you'll look up a company and you'll say, is this company an MLM? Uh, or it, you might even look up, is this yes. person, is this company a pyramid scheme? And by for legal purposes, people are like, well, it is a legitimate company, and but it is a, le- a multi level marketing. You want and and that you know, even though it yeah. is all legal, it doesn't mean that it's any productive for its employees. You want you want to go and find out if it's an MLM or pyramid scheme. Go on the third, fourth, fifth page of Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they literally cover their tracks. They're going to go and everything on the first pages, they're going to go and put bots. They're going to have their employees go, their actual employees go and say, no, it's not a pyramid scheme. I've made good money off of it and yada, yada, yada. But or if you sue go, the first five pages. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So it's false information. And then once you start getting into that kind of stuff, check the Better Business Bureau, which although I still find the BBB a little bit sketchy, they do have payouts type of stuff but go and check reddit reddit is awesome with that kind of stuff go yeah. and uh, tr- trust pilot different information about the website and just the fifth page of google is where it's at yeah yeah no you're right and it, look a little bit deeper uh to find out more about them but a lot of times it, it it'll ring a bell as soon as you say as you see okay i'm unpaid and it's purely result based and, and you have, have to pay for the problem above me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I should get it. Cause why should we consider you as a salesman if you don't get it by our own product, which is and ridiculous. Like, mm, okay. <laughs> which, which by the way, I've never had to buy a product from my company. From, despite no. Working at it. <laughs> I mean, we both have a little bit both, more niche. Yeah, both, companies, both, but... both of us, if I'm buying product from them, um, uh, they'd, I'd probably get brought out of the company there like where did you get this yeah and if i bought company uh product from my <laughs> well, company you would be, i'd be you in would, business <laughs> <laughs> yeah you would you wouldn't be you would be you'd be making good money <laughs> so with that being said everyone those are four of the four worst ways to be making money that was fun so, that was really it was fun. a fun episode i do agree uh so with that being said uh, my name is Owen Parody. I'm here with my co-host, William Goulet, and we're proud to present to you the College of Wealth Podcast. Peace. Two figures, peace. This has been your daily dose of motivation with the College of Wealth Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to leave us a positive review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for listening. And until next episode.